So today what we're going to be getting into is your limits and your switches. So fan limit switches is it does two things. You're going to find your fan limit switch on some of your older style gas furnace, uh, oil fire furnaces. And really what they're doing is it controls the fan and also acts as a high limit safety switch. So really, it's two switches wired in parallel with each other. Okay, the fan limit switch automatically turns the fan on and off based off of a preset temperature. Now, in most factory set um, fan limit switches, they're usually set to turn the indoor blower fan on roughly around uh, 140, maybe about 150 degrees, and then shut the indoor blower off at approximately 100 degrees. Okay, the reason why we have fan limit switches on furnaces is because we want to allow the heat exchanger time to heat up before the fan comes on. This kind of eliminates the nuisance service calls and problems that sometimes we experience in homes where you know a homeowner or, or business will complain that when, when the heat initially comes on they feel like a cold draft um, coming out of the vents. So by delaying the fan from coming on right at the call for heat, it allows the furnace time to kind of heat up a little bit and then turn the fan on. Okay, so the fan limit switch has a heat sensing element on it. So when the furnace overheats, the element will also open a set of contacts, shutting off power to the ignition source. That's our high limit side of the fan limit switch that we're talking about. That is usually set at around 200 degrees. Okay, now there are ones that are out there that are about 250 degrees, but for factory setting, we usually leave them at about 200 degrees. That is one setting that we really do not ever want to mess around with. Um, your fan limit switches have the ability to be wired as high voltage. Uh, you can uh, wire it for 120 volts, 208, whatever it is that you're dealing with. It could be wired just for only low voltage stuff. Uh, if all of your, you know, your gas valve or uh, other components operate off of 24 volts, you can wire it just for low voltage stuff, or you can wire it for both a combination, high voltage and low voltage, which is very, very common in your gas fired equipment where you're going to want to wire the high limit switch on the 24 volt side because you want it to de-energize the gas valve but you want it to turn on the indoor blower which operates off of 120 volts so you're going to wire that side for the 120 volt circuit. The fan and limit contacts are controlled by a helical bimetal uh, positioned uh, nest in the heat exchanger or next to the heat exchanger, sorry. The combination control can be easily retrofitted for different voltages in the field. So for example, if the furnace calls for both the high limit and fan control contacts to be high voltage, a jumper tab must remain in place in the fan limit switch control. When we are looking at the fan limit itself, this is really what it's going to look like. Uh, it's going to have a little dial right here which will actually spin as the furnace starts to heat up. It'll have a set of contacts for your fan, it'll have a set of contacts for your limit, and then right in the center here it would be a little jumper, like a little brass jumper. So if we are going to have this furnace uh, wired for high voltage on both our limit and fan control, this little jumper can remain in place and all you would need is just one power wire to come in to power up your limit side and your fan side. 
if you were to take this and wanted to separate those two contacts so that you can wire for either high voltage and low voltage, you would have to remove this little brass jumper. Take a piece of like some needle nose and just break the little brass jumper in there and that will actually separate your limit and your fan contacts into two separate components. Okay, if the furnace calls for high voltage fan control and a low voltage, you have to remove that jumper. Okay, this switch also has a delay in shutting the blower down. This allows the heat exchanger time to cool off and dissipate uh, furnace heat at the end of the cycle. And again, that's usually going to shut off once the furnace reaches around 100 degrees. The temperature sensing element of the switch is called a bimetal helix, and it's located in the airstream near the heat exchanger. So when the furnace turns on and air is heated, the bimetal will expand and close the contacts, therefore turning on the fan. So this is what the bimetal helix will actually look like. It's just really like a piece of spiraled metal. This will sit right inside the, the furnace close to the heat exchanger where the warm air will actually pass over this. This will actually expand and will make the dial actually turn and it will eventually close the contacts on the fan side to bring the fan on. The limit side of the device is actually the safety. Okay, remember, this is what we want to use to shut the fan, the burner off in the event of an unsafe situation. Okay, if the fan does not come on for whatever reason or there is a, other problems causing the heat exchanger to overheat, we want that limit switch to open the contacts, which is going to shut off power to your gas valve or your burner or whatever it is that you're dealing with. And it's going to remain off until that furnace cools off or is serviced. So here is what the fan limit switch would look like in a oil burner. Okay, so here we are. We have 120 volts. Here's our, our power and our neutral. So power would be coming down through our service switch, through our fuse, into maybe a junction box if it's there into our fan limit switch. Now notice how power will go this way and power goes that way. So at about 140, 150 degrees, this switch will actually close, which would bring on our fan. And if the event that the furnace happens to overheat or this fan doesn't come on like it's supposed to or whatever, we have our limit. Remember now, these guys are wired in parallel. So power is going this way and power is going this way. So this guy is a normally closed contact. Remember, this is my limit. This is going to open if the furnace reaches a roughly 200 degrees. If, again, if this furnace happens to have an issue, it's overfiring, the fan doesn't come on, some sort of issue where it's an unsafe condition and that furnace reaches 200 degrees, that switch will now open. And when that switch opens, it will shut off my burner and my primary control in this case, which is right here. Okay, so here's my thermostat, here's my CAD cell, here's my burner and igniter and all that stuff. So this is my entire burner circuit right over here. That would shut off. Okay, we want that to be a safety. In HVAC, we do not ever want to jump out a safety. We want it to work the way it's supposed to. It is an unsafe condition. We need something there that is going to take out that piece of equipment so that we don't burn a building down or create some sort of havoc that's going to make something detrimental happen. When we are changing or setting our knobs, you are going to see on the face of the fan limit switch, you're going to see three little, little knobs. The first knob that you see is what temperature the fan will turn off at. Usually, again, that's going to be about 100 degrees. The next knob is going to be when the fan turns on. And again, that's going to be around 140, maybe 150 degrees. The last knob is my limit. This is the knob that we really do not touch. Okay, so when we are moving these dials, around and setting our temperatures, you need to use two hands to do this. One hand has to kind of push the, the wheel in to kind of hold it steady so it doesn't move. And then you're going to take your other hand and just simply slide 
the little dials to where you want them to be. The other functionality that we see here is the auto manual switch right here. Usually when we are in normal operation, this little dial or this little button is pushed outward, which puts the entire fan limit switch into the auto function, which means it's going to operate off of the temperature. If we push that button in, it turns on a manual switch, which will manually close the fan switch to turn the fan on. We normally do not want that to be pushed in because the fan will run all the time and it will never shut off. Okay, remember, if we are in the heating mode, we do not want to have cold drafts. We want the fan, we want the furnace to operate based off of temperature so that we don't have a drafty call and, and people complaining. So this button should be in the outward position. You grab it and just pull it outward, you'll feel it kind of click, and then it's in the auto function. 